1979 Revolution Black Friday is a choice driven narrative game. You play as a Reza, who is a photojournalist, takes photographs, and is basically trying to uh, avoid getting killed by the riots going on in the uh, late 1970s. Now, this was uh, basically uh, riots caused by the Shah's brutal regime. The Shah was losing control of the country through uh, the Ayatollah wanted to make a comeback and from 15 years of being uh, expelled from the country and the Shah's reign, well it wasn't a reign of terror to a degree, it was more of a reign of um, just keeping the poor man down, just the uh, rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. I mean it wasn't even a poor country, this country could have been such a, a wonderful, rich, vibrant place, but unfortunately politics, religion don't mix well, and Reza is trying to survive it all. And of course, Kodame is, uh, well, I told Kodame is uh, not really the leader of the country yet, because uh, that uh, nasty piece of work turns out to be even worse than the Shah of Iran. But we don't find out until later. And of course, if you watch The Naked Gun, you know what this guy is capable of, you know. Anyway, this game is pretty good. It's beatable in about two hours. There's multiple kind of endings and choices that you can find out for yourself. I've yet to unlock them all, but I've played it, the game through twice, once live, once through normal gameplay, and you will find yourself really drawn into it. The story itself is really uh, bing bong boom. There are plenty of choices to be had. Some are more fun than others. For instance, the person who's torturing you with this nasty piece of work, you can call them an asshole, and you'll be, well, <laughs> given given exactly what you deserved. Too much hilarity for me, and I enjoyed that part. This guy is an absolute nasty piece of work. It's based on a real person who personally tortured 2,500 people. Yeah, until he was replaced, probably by someone even worse. But this guy was nasty, not to be messed with. Again, all these little stories are unlockable by just exploring the game in its little short breaks from the narrative you will be exploring the world, or the uh, very um, kind of compact world. In other words, there's, uh, yeah, you guessed it, invisible walls. As you move through the streets, which is your, basically, missions, is to collect information, and that's what it's all about. Collecting information, proof of people's uh, wrongdoings, and taking photographs of people. The photograph system is kind of like a mini game where you got to get the yellow circle here and take a quick clip of the information that you need. It gives you not too many hints, so it's not exactly holding your hand too much. But when you take a photograph, it gives you a little bit of scrap information to put into a little book here, this folder, and it will tell you all about the history of the Iran Revolution more than I can ever explain. It's really wonderful fun and I enjoyed it the only downside is the controls you are very much stuck in a PS2 game it's really um, really kind of clunky the control system is a bit annoying the field of view the, the lifelessness of some of the uh, you know NPCs is kind of disappointing but the cutscenes and everything else are really wonderfully voice acted the uh, missions themselves are pretty boring. Again, the NPCs are incredibly ugly, but you got to look past that. You got to look past the game, the game's looks, you know, and look at the actual content here. There's a lot to be learned, and I enjoy Iran's history, and I've watched plenty of documentaries on it. You know, the the money that the Shah actually spent was sickening. You know, he wasted so much money when he could have been improving the country and getting the people on his side, building better schools. You know building better roads, everything, just improving the lives of his people. But instead he just squandered the money and too many of the Shah's regime's leaders were just absolutely corrupt, you know? And the Ayatollah and the others who wanted to take power from the Shah would eventually help the you know, Iranian people get a little bit of freedom. But over the years, the uh, as you know, the politics that they promote have been just as bad as the Shah's, if not more so. They've been very controlling, very restrictive of women's rights. 
and the women here in Iran were, you know, absolutely tantamount to being the best thing for the country, but they just weren't appreciated. They were kind of hammered down and made, uh, basically made slaves, really. They just weren't treated as well. You know, they had to wait years to get any rights at all. In fact, they don't get that many rights today. And this is a bit of a shame. It, they just seem to be, you know, years behind the Western world, you know, behind what we call normal civility, you know, and freedom of speech is paramount. And it's what makes America and Great Britain and European countries great is you do have a bit of free speech. In Iran, you know, it's kind of tapered down a little bit now. I don't know what it's like to live over in Iran. It'd be interesting to find out, you know. It's a great country. Well, well, you know, they don't seem to like Westerners, so they seem to be stuck in the Stone Age. The game really comes into its own during the cutscenes, which are really well done. Not really well animated to a degree. I mean, when it's uh, kicking off, there doesn't seem to be that many people in the riot itself, which is a bit disappointing. Quick time events are really well done. They're not too long and they're not annoying. Not too dumbed down either, but they are easy to do. <laughs> but if you screw up like I did this first time, and I was doing this live in the live stream, you will get killed, yeah, you die in this game. So you have to be careful, time those quick time events right and press that A button as fast as you can without getting your head crushed. And then you die, so the best thing about it is you can retry from the point you died. As the story comes to a close, you have to decide which of six people betrayed, um, well, betrayed your friends really, your revolutionary friends. And who stabbed your uh, pal, your new mate, and you have to pick one person. Of course, I picked this guy. Didn't have a clue, because I thought, he's annoying me the most. He looks guilty, so that was it. Unfortunately, I got him killed. Yeah, I thought it was just going to beat him up, honest, you know? So yeah, your decisions have consequences, which is really good. And that adds a nice little bit of replayability value. You can change that and pick somebody else and see how that ends up. So this is a game that can be played several times just to change the options and change make decisions that you have different outcomes and that adds a lot of appeal to the game and that's what I liked I played this game through twice really enjoyed it I have to recommend it highly if anything I think the graphics aren't the best the cutscenes and the voice work is excellent the background the history all the bits you collect the 80 items that you have to collect you know, all the little tidbits, which I didn't read all through, even during the live stream and the replay. I didn't actually, uh, you know, look at everything because there's a lot of information to the, you know, the revolution. And if you are really interested in it, you should really read all the info. You know, it's pretty shocking what happened. But, you know, the game itself, its choices, its narrative is really well done. I just wish to spend more time with a better graphics engine it would have been nice you know I would have loved realistic you know realistic graphics would have been excellent but again look past that and just look at the game itself it, it what it contains is a little bit of history and it's told really well it's very short but I was riveted the two hours were fun I actually found some of the gameplay elements distracting from what I wanted which was a little history tale and I love these sort of things these are the sort of stories I like to hear people struggle and this is one of the better games I've played narrative wise visual stories visual novels are excellent but this is definitely uh, in the same vein and it's done very well it's just a shame that it, it looks damn ugly during some of the action scenes and you'll fetch quests where you just gotta look for info and you know just decide what you're gonna do at the end when you have to make the final decision, pick a pick an enemy and get him killed. Your brother is also not on your side, and you can select whether you know he survives or not, or whether he uh, lives to become a thorn in your side. But again, there's more to this story than just one playthrough. You'll have to play through it several times. All in all, I really enjoyed the game, and I definitely recommend it. Um, I wish it did have a bit more polish. And that's about it. That's all I'm going to say. I hope you try the game out yourself. The full playthroughs on my channel. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And yeah, it's been a wonderful game to play. And yeah, 
definitely, definitely like these sort of games, and I hope you will too. Until then, don't forget to yeah, like and subscribe. See you soon.